So welcome. As you can see what this is going to be, this is going to be me going and solving through all of your scientific notation practice homework. That way hopefully you can watch this at a later date and get a better idea as to what we are going to be doing for it. So I'm just going to run through all of our problems first, though I think I might have just skipped one. I did. And as I said, hopefully you can watch this back and learn a couple of things. So the first thing that we want to do for scientific notation, especially for our first problem, is that if you see, we're going from standard form into scientific notation. Writing a value in scientific notation always has three rules. The first rule that you go and you think about is that you have to first think, is the zero a non-zero number? That's always the first like part, so non-zero number. Here we have 362 centimeters, so that rule, check, applies. Our second rule is that we write the number between, or so the number be here I'll just say number before the times 10 has to be between 1 and 10. So it always has to go in the pattern of number decimal number. And then finally, your last rule for scientific notation is that your exponent cannot be a decimal. So exponent has no decimal with it. As soon as we understand the rules for scientific notation, then putting something into scientific notation really is not that bad. Uh, let's start out with our number. Our number is 362 centimeters. What we do? We start out by writing it in the form of number decimal numbers. Then I want to say times 10, and I ask myself, remember you are the confident Nering student. It always goes from this direction back to your original number. And you ask, is my original number larger or smaller than what I have written here before the times 10? If your original number is larger, larger, then your exponent is going to be positive. If your original number is smaller, then your exponent is going to be negative. So, as you can see, we've written 3.62. Our original number is 362, meaning that our original number is larger than what we have written meaning we are going to have a positive exponent, and I'll just write a positive here just to emphasize. Then we ask ourselves, how many times do we need to move the decimal to get back to our original? Here, the decimal is at the end here at the very, very back, so we have to move it two times. We would have moved it a positive two times, and we write our unit in the centimeters. So this is number one. Let's move on to number two. And with number two, we have 14.1 meters. Again, the same thing. I'm going to start out by just writing it in the form 1.41 times 10. And I ask myself, going this direction from your number to the original, is the original number larger or smaller than the number that you have written? Again, 14 is larger than 1.41, so I have a positive exponent. I only had to move my decimal one time to get it to the proper placement, so I have a positive one exponent with meters in the end. It's number two. Number three is 1,500 or 15,823 inches. Same exact rules. Write it in between one and ten, so 1.5823 times 10. My original number here is larger than the number that I have written, meaning I have a positive exponent, and I had to move my decimal that is originally in this location one, two, three, four times to get it to the proper location. So I have a positive times 10 to the fourth and units inches. Awesome. Keep on going now. I have 0 0.0032 milliliters. I start out same exact rules. I write the values that are not zero placeholders between 1 and 10. 
I need to multiply by 10. And here is the first time that my number that I started out with is smaller than the number that I have written. So I go and I have a negative exponent. I needed to move my decimal one, two, three times in order to get it to this form. So I have a negative three milliliters. Awesome, keep on going. Next value that we have is 0.115 meters. I write it in between one and 10, 1 1.15 times 10. I have a negative or a smaller value here than what I have written, meaning I have a negative exponent. I moved my decimal once, meters. Awesome, keep on going. Oh gosh, why would I make you do this? So, same exact rules. We have, oh, what is that? 137,854,938,384 kilometers. That is a gigantic number. But the rules remain the same. I'm going to write it on this side. I start out between 1 and 10. 1 1.378. Five, four. Notice I'm not chopping any off. Nine, three, eight, three, eight, four times ten. Our original number is so much larger than the number that we have written. So we have again a positive exponent. And my current decimal is right here. Let's count how many times I moved it. It is one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times, so times 10 to the positive 11th kilometers. Keep on going. I think we got one or two left. So here, we're just doing the exact opposite. Instead of a gigantic number, I have a tiny number. Of, I don't even know what place that is, but you wouldn't even be able to tell that something has that mass on you if it's in milligrams. Same thing though, same exact rules, 2.3 times 10. We look in this direction. This number is so much smaller than what we have written here. So we have a negative exponent. I moved the decimal one, two, wait, 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 one, two, yep. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 times. So a negative 12 and then our units, milligrams. Perfect. All right, here's the first time that we are going the opposite direction. We are going from standard form or from scientific notation now to standard form. The same rules apply, but now the main thing that you're looking at, you're looking at your exponent. Here, I have a positive exponent, meaning that the number I am going to write is going to be larger than the number that I am given right now. I need to decide how many times I move my decimal. And here I move it two times, or four times. So I start out with 321. I have moved the decimal twice. I need to move it two more times, meaning that instead of one, two, I need to add two zeros, zero, zero. And then you can add the decimal at the end, just as a reminder. So I have what is this? 32,100 centimeters. Awesome. Next. 1.4132 times 10 to the third meters. Same exact rules. Positive exponent. I move my decimal three times with the number that I write getting larger, meaning one, two, three. My decimal ends here. 1,413.2. Meters. Awesome. Next, positive exponent. I need to make this number larger. So instead of 9.9, .9, I'm going to start adding zeros. 9, 9. I have moved my decimal once. I need to move my decimal seven more times, then, meaning that I am going to have seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I add my unit feet. You can add commas if you would like to reach 990 million feet. Next question. This is the first time we have a negative exponent. The negative exponent means that we are going to make this number 
is 7.7437 smaller by one decimal place. So I will get 0.77437 and then units meters. Awesome. Next, same thing, negative exponent. I would move my decimal once here and then I need to move my decimal five more times. It is getting smaller because of negative. So I need point and then five zeros, three, four, five, and my original value, 314 units grams. Done. All right, keep on going. I have 4.185 times 10 to the six miles. Positive exponent here on the six means that this number is going to get larger. If I move it three times, I am at the end, meaning that I need three more zeros before I have my decimal. So I'm going to write it 41858. That is good enough. And then three more zeros. One, two, three decimal miles. All right. Couple more, 1.182 times 10 to the zeroth milligrams. What I want to do is look at my exponent here. The zeroth exponent is very, very specific. Anything raised to the zeroth, so the exponent zero, what this means is that this whole number equals one. So what this variable is telling us, or what this scientific notation is telling us, it is 1.182 times one milligrams. In which case you can just write it the exact same as what you have, 1.182 milligrams. And I think, yep, that is it. All right, thank you everyone, and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.